please leave your message. I'm trying to call you out back. Hello? Yo, what up? It's Joke. Joke, no joke. Uh, the music's out. Choke no joke. Oh, what's going on? What's oh, good? What's good, man? You in a minute, huh? What's good? You live right now. No, that was you. Ain't nothing. You live right now. What's good? <laughs> Go. <laughs> At the tone, please record your message. When you finish, re- this thing is goofy. Then they got the the uh, the old, uh voicemail where you you think you're talking to somebody good looking mr vaughn follow my new page y'all follow my new channel joke no joke i'm about to move over to my new channel Wolf, welcome back. What's going on, my brother? Hey, uh, what's the deal? You live. Oh, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. First, congratulations on the new channel, you know? Yeah, thank you, thank you. What's going on yeah, with you? What's on your mind? Talk to the people. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, I, you, you, you always ask the good questions. Like, would you ask, uh, you put a post, I just saw it, like, earlier this morning. You asked a good question. You said, uh, how come they didn't charge um, him for attempted murder on Shook Knight? That was a, that's an excellent question. I didn't hear anybody ask that question anywhere throughout this whole entire situation when, since he's been arrested. Well, I would go. I did the research on that and the statute of limitations for attempted murder and in Nevada is only three years. Mm. So they, okay, they, they couldn't get that off. Now, maybe if they make it federal or some shit, they probably could try to do some type of Rico gang type of shit and hit him. But the statute of limitations for attempted murder is only three years, which is kind of crazy. That's exactly where I was going. Two, two, two different things I want to bring up to, to discuss. Number one, how come nobody's discussed in that Reggie Wright's an informer on, uh, excuse me, informant on multiple levels? A federal informant, yep. right? And if you don't, he checked the dossier with um, Phil Carson. He had a whole conversation with him. They break it down for you. Phil Carson breaks down how he met Reggie, how Reggie is a 137 informant, right? Yeah. And then in the case that he recently got in California, he, he, he was a informant then too. The case that he got with his father, his father, him and his father was indicted with him and Great Street Crips. It was, it was sending his um, drugs to the benefit to the Peter Rose family, right? He, 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 this is an interview, he tells you that he got a downward departure, which is called a safety valve. Yeah. Okay? Yep. So downward departure safety valve means that you have to be brief. Now, this is the same reason that, you know, anything about the BMF, Blue, Blue Da Vinci and Big Meech have an issue because Blue Da Vinci has a safety valve. He debriefed. And, and Big Meech said, oh, you can't do that. That's missing. Right? Right. Back 100 is all over this issue. So he, that's his threat. So they you know. Now, stick a pin on that, right? So that's, that's one conversation to point. The other conversation to point. Everybody's worried about Diddy on the East Coast when everybody in LA should be worried because this whole entire thing says gang, which not just says, it says KC on it, it says gang enhancement and put Southside Crips on there. So that means that if anyhow this man goes and changes his story, which he already has, or goes and tries to take the deal or something, and the feds pick this up, the feds can now go back and re, re um, indict everybody that was on the old case, plus whoever he's going to snitch on now, because you know he's going to snitch. So if, if the people who should be worried is the people in L.A. L.A. should be on fire right now because he knows everybody's business in L.A. Exactly, and that, that's exactly what I was saying. Like, nigga, this, this domino effect is going to be some gang shit. All y'all gang niggas is getting ready to go down. Bloods and Crips. There's going to be more pie rules and motherfucking uh, 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 South Side Crips. And then motherfuckers attached to them. And it's going to, that Rico, if that shit go federal and go Rico, 
they they gonna clean up LA off the games. Yeah, that that not you that Dazier and you can promote it because I, I support uh the Dazier, I support uh Bill Carson. Um and that comes out October 23rd, and I'm waiting for it. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be on the podcast. If you got the podcast on your phone, I know an app for you. You got the podcast you're going to you put the Dazier. It comes out October 23rd, and they got interviews with David Mack too. So that that's going to be interesting, and you're going to see a lot more information come out. And Reggie better be shitting his bricks. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, when that new dossier come out, y'all going to see how much more information is going to be uh, out here. And shout out to R.J. Bond too. Um, I just started watching his stuff yesterday because I've been seeing people who put his name in my um in my comments. So I just started watching uh, his documentary uh, yesterday. Uh, well, today, actually. And there's so much. Oh, my God. Yo, the Compton Police Department is the dirty, dirty. Them niggas was moving drugs out of the evidence room. I'm like, yo, Compton is a, a dirty-ass police department, bro. Yeah, because he he Reggie Rice Senior. They said allegedly gave up people above him and and, and under him, but he was in charge of the gang unit, and and they and they had the the, 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 the drugs, the drugs, and they these niggas was moving drugs out of the evidence room, bro. I mean, like hundreds of bricks just gone, hitting the streets. Yo, it, yo, bro. Yo, one of the cops, they went in the locker. They like, yo, open your locker. He like, nah, you know, no. Man, they like, yo, open your locker. He like, nah, man. And they, they took the, 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 the wire, I mean, the, the, the lock cutters, opened his locker. And this dude had two bricks of cocaine in there. A cop, bro. And his personal locker. Yeah. And they all know each other, bro. They all grew up together. And it's like, come on, man. But yo, that 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 Compton boy, y'all gotta go watch this joint called Tupac Assassination. The uh 
what is it called? Tupac assassination, uh, the war for Compton. Hold on, let me look. I'll be honest with you. I'm glad they did. This. They found found the initiative to get this Tupac situation rolling. But until they they they, they take the initiative to solve the Biggie murder, I'm not really I'm not I'm not jacking anything else. I love Tupac to death, but yo, he's not. They they, they blatant the, the Biggie murder, which is a blatant disrespect. Because it's that, that was just that that to me that was just like a paid hit. That was a paid assassination. This Tupac situation, it, it could be. It could be this way, it could be that way. At least it's a projection. But with Biggie, that was just that that was just a piece hit. Which which you, what you call it just did a, a interview Money B from Digital Underground talking about Keith e. D's uh arrest, and he's saying the police had something to do with Tupac being killed. They have to be complicit somehow. They have to be complicit somehow. Because you know what? That's responsible for no matter what is Reggie Wright Jr. because he's the head of security. There's no possible way that my principal has been under been attacked or been in some kind of security on fight night in Las Vegas when everybody has access. You have random people running all over the place. You have cars all over the place. You have to, how are you not increasing security? How are you not going to walk more good? You've just been an altercation, not only an altercation with just random people, but people you will know from your hometown that are known to be killers. You, 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 you were death row. You were with weapons everywhere to award shows. So how is it that y'all didn't up to school? What you like is if you're the security is most prince and then you're supposed to cover death row. You had the most massive failure of history when it comes to entertainment because you had two pop die on your watch. And you, and you literally, it was a, literally a conversation, an hour and a half to two hours before he died, and you did not do any kind of security changes to make sure his life and was more secure between that point and that point. So either you're complicit in his death, or you're just a terrible, terrible security agent. Exactly. You telling me this is the biggest, y'all got the biggest label in the world. Y'all got drama with everybody. This nigga should done. Made niggas drink piss and all kind of shit. And y'all sat there and a fight break out. And you know these dudes? Yo, yo, and they the rival to your label? And you don't up the security? Yo, you don't up the security? You don't up the security? Come on, brother. Ain't nobody stupid here, bro. It's, 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 it's one of those things is that you have you can't sit there and not take responsibility somehow when it's your responsibility. And then in the situation, people are telling are saying that you said this man down to being to to being to to that one step right there. They need to, see, people understand like it's one complicity is looking the other way. Being conspiracy is actually acting in, the, in, in it. So when you sit there and someone's sitting air from the next cell, you know how the next cell work back then. It wasn't like yo, I don't know if anybody had a next cell, but I had Yeah, cell. I did. I'm sure I'm sure you had like fifty thousand people. As you know how it goes, you said that straight to somebody else. Back in the days when we was on um, around the street, that we was just one person straight. Exactly. Right? So if if you get a next cell trip to your phone and say, We got it. I mean, somebody tell you directly, if he just got shot and somebody says they got him and they send him directly to your phone, that means you're already in on the pre plan You must know something. That's right. That's right. And this is what this is why it's like when people say the KPD story, they believe it. I'm like, all right, so what about the walkie talkie conversation? What about him taking the guns off of them and them having a meeting? What about him keep calling Michael Moore and make sure he's at what, what about him? Taking him off of Tupac after the fucking fight, bro. With some gang bangers, y'all know get busy. Y'all tell me all that is a coincidence, and it just KBD and them niggas just ironically was able to go way over six six two, whether it was 15, 20 minutes or an hour, and was able to ironically roll in and meet up with these niggas and and and, and and find them while they looking for them. And come on, bro. I know people can't be this slow, man. You said something else interesting that, 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 that made me think about something. Now, if 
if you watch the other dialogue, try the other dialogue, and I'll be honest with you, those are the most compelling um, PVD interviews where he told on himself if you watch the other dialogue. And a uh, side note, when Vlad was sitting there telling you that um, the defense came to him and he and then asked the interviews, but he denied it. He was doing that for two reasons. Not only to get street cred, but he was also telling you that there's other people out there that the defense went to as well that did not <laughs> deny it. So when you go check out our dialogue, go check out those interviews where TBC is getting mad when you talk about <laughs> We talk about Tupac deserves to get shot. And so you imagine the unedited uh, footage that he had, and besides that, you go to just look at that footage. He tells a story about how Greg Keaton comes and starts showing him all these these different placements on his board. Of uh, he kept seeing it, he kept at first saying, "Nah, fuck y'all, excuse my language, y'all, 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 right?" And then he, he said, "You know what? He go roll with the story." Now the key part of the story is is the placement in the car. Now, this is where you know Kit could do where Katie is a cop. So he's just assuming that, okay, you know what? This is driver, we need to call, so he should have passed it. This is the driver's back, so he said something different. He said that there's mostly said, when he, you have a 400 pound man in the back, right? And someone has to reach over and want the gun over him, that's probably not going to happen, right? Remember, you brought up that point of right. you were bringing up a point. Now, so if, and you remember, you were bringing up the point of he jumped out the van and jumped in the car with them, so he wasn't rolling with that tradition. So that, that car was already rolling. So if I'm a 400 pound man, who am I going to sit in a car with any nigga or a bitch in the back? Right? Yeah. Right? That's, that's the same lane, right? The driver. So if there's, there's those only three in the car, if he jumps in the car, where are you going to jump in? He's going to jump in the back seat. Because there's the fat guy that always going to sit in the front. Because if I'm, a, if I'm that big and that far, I'm not sitting in the back. I'm in, in, in the front seat. I can push the seat back and you skinny guy get in the back. Right. Right. You know, yeah. Now, no. if you switch up the seating, and if you switch up the seating into where the proper seating is, which is in the back seat, now it starts making sense that you saw a big black arm coming out the window. Mm. Yeah, and but you see, but the another contradictory in his story is when they was at six six two and Corey Edwards was crying, like, yo, they gonna kill us, we're gonna kill us. This I know he said he jumped in the van with the busters. Out of the van, he jumped in the car. He jumped out the van. He jumped out the van with Corey. He jumped in the car. Uh, the no, he said he got in the van with the Busters. Oh. That's how he checked. He rolled around and he jumped out. And Corey was there. And he was my right to get people, Corey, because Corey snitched. Corey was snitched in, in, in Cali, right? So he has people, for Corey. Right? That's why I can't stand Corey, right? And that and that's why Corey be moving like he's moving. Right? So wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. You said Corey's yeah. a snitch. Yes, Corey's a snitch. It's go uh, go back to the on the dialogue. He said that they down that the gun that they could have asked him in the movie. He said that uh movie they did where he said they found the 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 gun of the clock for the, 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 the his girlfriend's house in the, the flower pot or some shit to the dog. He's like, nah, that didn't ever happen. What happened was and they said the the farm did find the the gun and say eventually because um that they were the big dog did actually find the shit buried in the backyard and uh, it wasn't like how they showed in the documentary. But I like, like, like I said, the other dialogue I mean,
mind you, this is, this is another thing. This is another thing. I, I don't. I, the East Coast play. The X Factor I play. The East Coast pitchers try to strike get Diddy and say, "Well, I can like Zip with some little thicker." And if you know Zip, Zip is a hustler for over fifty years. He survived the maiden school era. You see, he's fifty, fifty years hustling. He's like, like he said, he, he, you know, he, Zip is a top level. He was a gangster, gangster. He's not the type of dude you just don't be like, "Yeah, I got the gun." Nah, he's moving in that. He's he, he, he avoiding um, um, uh, the authority since the 70s. He came under Pumpy Johnson. You see what I'm saying? Zip, Zip is not no little, little dude. So, if, in the situation, TPD, True and D was working with the whole. TPD was, was not the top shot caller in the organization. Right? He was a part of an organization. There was a higher person than that. Like I said, check out the how the who formed Death Row. There was two people that formed Death Row. Everybody knows Harry O, which is the blood side, but there's a prick side. Right. And those that and his, and that, that team is where you get T D from. So when T D says he's handling all that work, that's what happened. And what happened why well, there was really beef is because Shook stole the company for both of them. So that started though, that's why the mob that's why he surrounded himself with the mob. You know what I'm saying? And he brought him his little team in, and they were going back and forth when they go to war. And he had his pay issue with them. It was, but Harry O was doing his thing. They probably, well, I'm not talking people business, but that's what's going on on LA business, right? Right. So it starts spilling over and over and over into bigger things. And that's why, that's why, if you listen to Phil Carson, he said, listen, I already know who did everything because of your full record, because you know, he said, I have all the forensic evidence. I don't know why the FBI is supposed to the close the case. The FBI has all the evidence to close the case. And literally, he, he, it literally says, he says, if, if you listen to this interview, it, it's literally the interview between him and Reggie, where, he, he was, where Reggie was sitting there like, oh, I don't know if that. He's sitting there trying to say, Phil Carson never met me. And Phil Carson's like, oh, I met you when you were in Like he, he try, He's like, I'm trying to save you, Reggie. Don't let me tell you how I met you. Right? If you know my, and he's like, oh, if you know my partner, da, da, da. Oh, I know you too. And he, Reggie had to back himself up. Right? The truth is, is that fact that he did like this, um, um, the so Carson said, he said, there's paperwork already stating each of the, and the, the, the biggie case that from the LA, um, LA, um, internal reference and internal affairs department that states already that David Mack and David Perez was involved in the biggie case. He said, this is a 100% stated fact on paper already. So if you listen to the interview, um, Mr. Dossier. Yeah, yeah, I listen, I know, I know all that information. I know exactly what you're saying is the truth. So, so if you, so we, in a scalable picture, right? We start seeing like there's a lot of moving parts. Whereas if if, if, if they want a fair one with 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 Baby Lane and Tupac, then who's gonna make that call? They gonna make that call. The person probably will most likely get that call. Not to be sure. Most person likely will get that call to be ready. Definitely. You get that call that you have the opportunity to be tell to somebody where it's gonna be placement time and. Just take it starts things start happening. So like it's one of those things that if you are if you're in the right position, you can make something happen and line somebody up without even having a super plan beforehand. You could just have the right people in the right position and be able to line. Let me ask you like I asked the last caller caller. Do you think that is any way possible that Reggie and, and Keefe D was in on this Tupac shit together? You you ever heard them talk on the phone together? I've, I've heard them argue, but never really like had a conversation. You know, I heard them argue over a lot. You know what I'm saying? But never like. Yeah, I, I've I've seen, seen Reggie call Keefe D on his phone and have a conversation with him. Like they be kicking it. Even Vlad, Reggie gave Vlad and all these other websites. PPD information. That's how they got in touch with him. But this is a thing, right? They all look, they all know each other intimately because he, he, he said the day after they got back from California, the first person who pulled up on them was Reggie's father. Pulled, what does that tell you? Because he knows exactly to come pull up on you. I know he knows. Exactly. Knows you. And and that's where that's where LA, I mean Las Vegas. Metro PD got the ever ever uh 
got the information because they said they, they got it from the Compton Police Department that it was Orlando Anderson. This is what I'm saying. All that information came from Compton. And, and who the fuck would know that that fast? Nobody in the motherfucking camp saw the shooter. Right. And who and who got who told them that Suge went out the country? Remember, he said they went after that. They went to the Bahamas. Suge was on probation. He ain't supposed to leave the fucking state or the country, rather. And allegedly, Reggie told he left. Reggie <laughs> allegedly, Reggie told the probation department that Suge got into a fight in, in Vegas. They didn't know. Exactly. So literally, you heard of people who have to like really they they have to get move somehow. And, and, and it wasn't for the fact that he got shot. You uh, you wouldn't even know an incident really got happened in a, a fight could have happened in Las Vegas. You might not have heard about it for one thing. Right. It's it, what's more telling is that the fact that. After this all happened, now mind you, you have Kevin Mackey, who was a defense, who, who was a federal informant, you know what I'm saying, selling people drugs, selling these people, I mean, like guns, um, selling these people um, um, bulletproof vests, right? He's a direct informant. You have every, I mean, we're, we're talking about it's a Mike Tyson fight. You already know the fact that out there watching anyway, regardless. Just, just being out there watching regardless, right? It's, that's how they they got um, Frank Lucas, right? That's also they always be out there watching anyway, right. spending money who's not, right? So you're telling me, that, and, and even back then they had something that they had more cameras in probably Las Vegas than anywhere else in the world, probably. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> because right? Because that's right? so you're telling me that, and, and the feds was watching. Oh, and they didn't have the implicit idea of what happened. Now, if it's just some gang banging, this is a why would they just come pick him up the day, the, the day after? It, it was years and years after he got caught in another case where, and, and you tell me, Greg King suddenly filed this guy out of nowhere and just remarkably got the story out of, up out of him after all this time since he stuck in jail. When they had all this information already sitting there, it's not like they didn't have all this information. If MTV could be saying it out loud, how is it possible that the LA, uh, the, the Las Vegas didn't pick it up, the LA didn't pick it up? Well, even worse, it should have been a federal situation because one person left from one state to another state and it was gang related. That, that's why I think this shit is going to become federal at some point, man. It has to. If they put a gang enhancement on it, then it has to because where did the gang come from? Yeah. I, th I think if it go federal, it works. In, it works in Keefe D's favor. I think so too. I think because he has a, he has a better chance to get it, it working with the feds to get out because he has that's to, right. He gets more information. That's because right. As long as he starts telling tell where the bodies is dropped, he can just give out thirty different bodies that come home. Who who do you think this 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 new surprise witness is?
actually doing death row, because um, it, it couldn't be, it couldn't be this side. It could, it, it, cause I'm thinking like, if it was on the PPP side, that they wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to run up to him after the fact, like the way he after the shot, and he's thinking like, "Yo, I get you might shoot you too." Tupac won't be worried about somebody you know don't. It had to be somebody he's familiar with, right? Yeah, that 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 that, that, that was the other thing too. Like that would be somebody he's concerned with. You know what I'm saying? If that that's true, but now, is this, now this other thing I'm thinking is this is this live in the testimony right? Is this current within front of the grand jury with the testimony, or is this with the testimony from back then that's facing in front of the grand jury? Because if that's the case, it could have been the um, outlaw dude that died. As we know, well, no, this crazy. grand jury was just on, just started only three months ago. So somebody came in to testify. Yes. So who is alive to testify? So listen, you figured that out. You know, you had to get because I'll be honest with you. Hey, hey, it's, it's either it's either Shug, Corey Edwards, or the other guys that Corey Edwards mentioned that was in in the, in the caravan with them going to hang out out there. It got it, that because everybody in Shug's t- or, or Trayvon Lane. And the only people it, it's only a little bit of people. That would get out the car and run up on pop car like that. They pop be worried about. That's either the outlaws. That's them and the outlaws that's still alive. Sure, because Sure got out the car. And remember, he had to open the door for the cop because he couldn't get it open. And that's it. Buntry and them chased the car and lost them, and they probably bought. Um, they probably c- came around. Remember, they said cops was there in 60 seconds, 90, 90 seconds, which also tells me that those cops probably was in on it too because we know police don't come that motherfucking fast. Here's what I'm confused about. If, if Shug was a snitching, Shug is coming home like he's a pretty big now. He got a sense of production, right? Yeah, he did. Of, um, yeah, he forgot the actual reduction but he's coming home any minute and he's about to clean up the whole death row mess that's over there between reggie wright and whack one you know what i'm saying they, they basically been exploiting death row game for the past uh, what, 15 years to make a profit and, so, and, and so, should do not fuck with reggie that's 110 percent fact i know that because i spoke to him myself should do not fuck with reggie at all that's a fact uh, I, I, And kind of set the narrative. He's already sitting there trying to say, "Oh, Shook lying. Shook lied about this. Shook lied about that." He's been setting that narrative. So when Shook comes home and starts telling the truth, then it's going to be a problem. Because see, they can sit there and talk, but Shook is going to make a million dollars worth of just just going to podcast with any just in the first first six months of him coming home. You right about that. Right. So so Shook is going to be Shook. Shook is going to be No matter what, anytime he comes home, no matter what, he has a story to tell. People want to hear about. So they're going to be wiped off the map. All they can say, all their shook stories, or all their stories about that, it just becomes invalid. Because now you have somebody who can really tell you what really happened. And who are you going to listen to? The security guy who who said, or are you going to listen to the, the, the actual person who's actually there, who's actually know what's going on? Because I think you said that. I think you said the most poignant thing. These people knew this man for eleven months and been exploiting him for twenty five years. I'm telling you, bro. And then you got to think they were security. How much time do y'all think they was around Pop? Niggas don't hang with security fucking 24-7. Only when they go into events. Come on, man. And this is Pop. He had his own crew. He's not like he had, he had the outlaws. He had his own crew of dudes he hung out with. Right. And these niggas ain't even on YouTube with their own channel telling Pop stories. And they saying they're going to a nigga channel that allegedly got his ass smoked. That got fired. And everything, and niggas, I don't understand these people, bro. This nigga straight lying to them. It, it's people, it, people want to do a connection that they get some kind of information because they're so in love with the mythos of Tupac and the, the golden age of Tupac. 
rock and biggie it's like that, that when they both died it like was a close of the era right things whether you do it or not the, the temperature just changed so people are really in love with the mythos of that and then anything that's unsolved but people don't have the definition for it they just, they just want more information for it so they can stop pieces it out in their mind but everybody's trying to stop out that, that the actual situation in their mind it was a, just like a situational trauma that happened right in front of everybody's eyes and there's no reconciliation about it so you're going to have people who still still traumatize life in their own way yeah it's like uh one white people looking for elvis <laughs> right. All right, man. I'm gonna let you go. Let uh, some other people get on here and stuff. Well, I appreciate you. Call me anytime. You got the number now, man. Yeah, bro. Yo, keep doing your thing. You know, I'm a supporter, man. Just keep doing your thing, brother. All right, peace. Thanks. All right, well. Let's call the six one old person back. They've been trying for a minute. The Mad Writer Films, you want to come on? I'm going to put the link in. The Mad Writer, I just put the link in there for you. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you for that info, Donnell. Will it be a bond for Keefe? Most definitely. It might be about two million dollars. And he gonna have to pay ten percent of it. If you know. He got property. If he got property and all that, he'll be good.
Okay, now look, look at this here. I gotta show y'all this. Yo, what's going on, man? Man, so what's good with you, man? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How you, brother? I'm all right. This is the mad writer, so God. I I appreciate your work, first of all. I think you know what I'm saying? And I think if anybody, you know what I'm saying, I mess with on this is is you, because I appreciate what you do. You know what I'm saying? I've been watching for a bit, and I ain't talked to you before, but this, this is about this situation today, dog. First of all, um, throughout, throughout all the years, you know what I'm saying, a lot of information out there, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but we got to understand, like, the information was already out there on DVDs and other shit, other interviews before it got to this point. So a lot of shit they trying to backtrack on to get rid of because they know a lot of people ain't got them DVDs, they got them VHS no more, they got that footage. But see, they sloppy as hell. It's like the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? And um, <clears throat> this shit is all smoke screens and mirrors, my G, because first of all, Dick Gregory already said that the fucking car was bulletproof. The information is already out there. He already said Kadala Jones was in the back seat. And the fucking shot came from the back seat. And he's not the only one that said that. You know what I'm saying? But we'll never talk about that because they're trying to sell us the narrative of Orlando Anderson. It's bullshit, cuz of It's bullshit. And we've known that for years it was bullshit. We just didn't know why. And they only did this shit so that we can, as black folks who, who love the music, who actually didn't talk for that self destruction shit, and we actually elevators of this. They wanted us to think a whole lot different by killing Pac and killing Big. You know what I'm saying? Because the same people did the same shit. The both people. We already know. You know what I'm saying? But so you tell her you, you, you feel like uh, Kadada Jones was in the car with Shug and Pac? Well, of course, like I say, Dick Gregory already put that out there that she was in the back seat. And the Washington Post and the New York Times noticed it, my G. But they, you know, we don't know that. So how they know that and we don't. So that's why I went on Reggie's channel and I'm like, 
how you know, how do Washington Post and New York Times know this girl was in the back seat the whole fucking time? But, you know, still can't say that because still has to be dead. You know what I'm saying? So he'll never say he was in the back seat with her. You know what I'm saying? Park ain't here no more. Park gone, and she didn't finish him in the car. She finished in the hospital or some MLK shit. You know what I'm saying? She may not have no recollection of it because we know MK also exists in our country. We know this. You know what I'm saying? But word is, like the man, the man put her there, and like I said, the New York Times and the Washington Post, you know this. But we in black America never knew this shit. They, 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 they and did the outlaws of Frank ever talk about uh Kadada? I wait, I, all I can remember is her telling him to put his vest on in one of these stories. I don't know if she ever let, went to the club with them or not. She, she told she convinced him to not put that bitch on, but Frank, but Frank had an interview outside of the club Second, hold on a second, real quick. Call from Michael. To accept, press. Michael, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Joe? How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. So you agree with this brother with about Kadada being in the car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause uh, back back then when, when all this first popped off, word got out that it was Kadada in the back seat that the car was bulletproof and that uh little half there was in the back seat as well. Then you had the story where it wasn't a white Cadillac. They were told it was a white Cadillac. Then you had the connection between Snoop and uh and Puff when they was real close with each other when. Uh, Snoop would come to, to New York and the radio station how to disrespect when, when uh, Pac and Snoop first started falling out because Snoop had came to the, uh, to, to the radio station out here and was doing the thing for, uh, for Biggie and for Puff. So I, I remember when uh, the thing had popped off that basically Snoop was told not to come to L.A. and a bunch of other people that were told not to come to, uh, I'm sorry, not L.A., but Vegas during the time of the fight night when, uh, when the Tyson fight went down. So you, you, you open up. A lot of information, a lot of information that's purposely put out there to mislead people, so you get so many people on the internet. And so by the time everybody is talking about like he be he's talking his story. So I mean everything is so to have so much to have between New York and LA and all this comes to the forefront that the police was involved, that political people was involved, and that people behind the scenes was involved on top of the celebrities. All right, love you too, man. Thanks for calling in. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I never heard that Kadada was in the backseat of the car. I'm not saying that if that's true or not. I don't know. I got to research that. 
The car being bulletproof. There can't be no truth to that. Because all those shots went through the door. Let me pull up the door. Hmm. Let's see. Let's try to find shots. Yeah, if she was in the back, I asked where the guy shot too. Yo. Yeah, you got mute your TV or something. Okay. Do you remember? Do you remember them saying that? A uh, helicopter came down and got two front. Do you remember that? Yeah. So what do you think about that? Is it a possibility that it was a it was a plant put there? And he actually got away? No. No 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 way possible? Nah. You you know why I I don't believe no no theory that like like that like he's alive type of shit. It's because I met mm -hmm. his, I met his mother, and okay. Uh, not only did I meet her, I produced the Rap City with her that you probably could find it on YouTube. And I produced okay. that show with her, so I had to spend some time to spend with Afini Shakur that day, and. Bro, ain't no nobody, no mother could fake that pain. Mm -hmm. Ain't no no woman could fake the pain that was in her face, and her voice, and the conversation that we had. It 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 it, it, it no, no mother, no mother. It I, I don't give a fuck. Ali Berry in the in the movie acting, you know, like she lost a child. There's no faking that energy, that pain that I saw in this woman's face. And for me to believe that she was faking it like her son was alive. So I don't believe right. her. Right. No. But I'm watching you, man. You're doing some great work. If I have anything, if I see anything else, I will call you and see how this is safe. Brother, you're a beautiful guy, man. I appreciate you, bro. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. Much love. Yeah, but I. Okay, much love, Detroit, baby. All right, all day. No fly zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit you back, though. All right, anytime. You got the number one. Yeah, I'm watching you right now. Yeah, one, right, one, one, one love, 100. Peace. Yeah, all, all those conspiracy theories that Pac is alive, and I don't believe none of those. Like I met a Phoenix Shakur, and ain't I seen my mother face when she came to visit me in jail on the visit? I know a mother's pain, and and ain't no way in hell a Phoenix Shakur 
was faking that the, the emotions that I've seen her in, in my face. It, 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 she would have to be Angela Bassett for me to believe her that, that Tupac was alive. Uh, like I mean, that her son wasn't her son wasn't dead. She couldn't fake that. I'm sorry. That that is that is something that I'm telling you. A mother cannot fake that. And, and, and for me, she, 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 you know, no way in hell. I don't believe that at all. And I would, uh, no, I'm not going to even entertain that. I believe that as much as I believe that this girl is out here right now, and she's, uh, Leah and R. Kelly's love child. <laughs> I believe that before I believe goddamn Tupac is alive. Now, what was I getting ready to show y'all? Hold on. Hold on. 